Welcome back to the Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to continue the blacksmith's house build. So in the last episode, we got the uh, base completed. Uh, we got uh, the forge uh, done. Uh, we did some light effects paints. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was, we got fairly far. Uh, but I'm, in this episode, we'll move on to the second floor. Now, sad to report, I was hoping to get this done in two episodes, but uh, it just it, doing the interior and exterior and trying to get it all to fit together, I just didn't, I didn't, I ran out of time. So we're going to have to do a third episode where I do the modular roof. And I also want to do an overhang kind of a, a canopy kind of thing, a roof over top of where the forge is. So when they're working outside, of course, that would be covered. Uh, so I was always, my intention was to have that covered as well. Um, but uh, I didn't get to those two parts. So let's take a look at what I did get done. <laughs> uh, so this is where we're at now. So you can see we've gotten the second floor completed. Um, got my logo there for the blacksmith's house. Uh, added, uh, I've never done uh, something like this before where I've uh, added a compartment uh, or an extension to the wall. Kind of like it. Uh, I wanted to add something uh, different. Uh, and this is the first time I've ever done foam shingles uh, before. Uh, so that's something a little different. I do want to carry this over onto the roof and continue doing foam shingles there. Uh, and then probably over the overhang that's going to be over top of the forge. Now I didn't continue on the light effects paints because I want to get that roof on there first uh, and then kind of see where the light is and then I can finish the final paint job down in here uh, and get the uh, full effect in there. We got to, still got the forge running uh, and we got uh, this locked in pretty good. So uh, similar to the, uh, actually to the, uh, the blockhouse build I made these attachments. So they kind of, you know, make decorations when you put it on there. You know, they look like timbers that are holding the floor up. Uh, but when you pull it off, uh, so they lock into place in here, like that. And now the building's nice and locked in place. So I'm pretty happy with that. That worked out pretty good. I got the interior down on the inside here. The staircase looks uh, pretty good going up to the uh, second floor. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much what we're going to cover in this episode. Uh, and then in the third episode, uh, we will finish off the roof and this project should be done. <laughs> uh, and then we'll move on to something else. Uh, but I, uh, I definitely wanted to take the time to get through this. Uh, and uh, I, didn't wanna, I didn't really want to cut corners. I just wanted to kind of my overall vision of what this should look like. So it might take an extra episode for us to cover it. Uh, but uh, I think uh, I think you guys will uh, enjoy the, the build. All right, so if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first hand information on when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table. Let's start painting and let's start crafting. Okay, so this is pretty much how I started. Uh, I pre-cut all this uh, in the first episode. Uh, this is all just dollar store foam board. Uh, and I'm just kind of measuring it all out here. Um, but I kind of already planned it out when I did the bottom. I kind of just cut all the pieces out uh, originally. Uh, and decided how I was going to get it to fit together. So that's the very bottom. I did texturize it with the tin foil ball. Um, I do plan on uh, using that tinfoil ball on both sides on everything here, uh, just to give it a stone texture on either side or a stucco effect. So then I went to cutting out windows. Uh, I decided I want one side to uh, have a large window. I'm just not pointing at a smaller window. There's two windows in the one side, and the other two that well, sort of the other one side there is is just going to be uh, plain nothing there. So I'm just showing you that I'm going to use that balsa wood to frame out inside the window. 
And again, just uh, showing you that I'm going to texturize everything with that tin foil ball on both sides. Now on that floor piece, I did I left the paper on the one side. That was the only piece I left the paper on the one side. But the uh, part facing down into the sec uh, main floor, of course, I texturized that. So, so then I started working on uh, creating this, uh, you know, kind of a window that sticks out a little bit, uh, kind of like a nook, uh, and. Uh, so I essentially just cut this out of foam, and I just wanted to show you that I, I angled the edges uh, just so it glues together uh, nice and tight. Uh, we don't have too many uh, gaps in there. Again, texturized everything with a tin foil ball uh, to give it that uh, stone look. Uh, of course, uh, on top I'm going to add a lot of uh, you know matchsticks and 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 uh, popsicle sticks and, and that kind of stuff just to trim it off. All right, so this is after I put the balsa wood in there. I put the uh, balsa wood in the uh, little nook here and then in the walls uh, around the top, bottom, just showing you on both sides. Now, at this point, I didn't actually texturize that one portion of it. I ended up going back with a tinfoil ball afterwards and, and took care of that. On that little nook, I left it. I, I was going to make it all just wooden planks, but I changed my mind. So I'm just showing you that I did all that. And I'm about to glue that on to that piece there. Uh, and that will uh, get all our walls prepared. I remember the one wall uh, on the fourth side is just plain. We are going to put some uh, embellishments uh, with uh, giving it that Tudor style look. Uh, and that's going to be the side facing the forge. So I plan on putting a sign of some sort there. Uh, and then of course the uh, overhang wall is going to be attached to that wall. So I didn't want to add a lot of windows. I was just showing you how to use that black craft paint, and I did this in the bottom half too, um, just to seal in those window areas, and it's a lot easier to paint them now, uh, and then add the uh, glass into the windows. So I'm just showing you after I've, I put that on there. So I did that first before I glued that piece on. Um, you know, obviously it's a lot harder to paint once you attach it, so I wanted to do it before I, I paint uh, before I sorry before I attach that together. Again, just measuring things out again, and just showing that I'm about to glue all this together. Now, I used hot glue and a little bit of uh, the white glue. Um, to glue that together, I used white glue, uh, but uh, those hot glue uh, glues much faster, so it's a lot easier to glue it that way. Just showing you I added a couple of uh, matchsticks in there just to frame out that uh, entranceway on the other side. And I'm gonna show you the hot glue gun here in a minute. Yeah, it's just it just dries faster. It's a lot easier to uh, put it together this way um, than to. The only problem with hot glue is that it leaves a lot of bubbles and strings, and you have to kind of clean it as you go. So I kind of get ahead of myself, and I forgot to put the glass in. <laughs> so I glued two sides together, uh, and then came to the horrifying uh, conclusion that I forgot to put the glass in. But that's all right. I didn't put all the sides on, so it's not a total loss. Uh, so that's just that plastic I, you get from any kind of packaging. Uh, I got mine from Package of Tea Lights, and I'm still using that piece. So all I really do is just put it over the window I'm going to use, trace it out with a marker, cut it out, and then stick it in. That's pretty much all I do to get it in there. So the one uh, matchstick in the middle of the window is recessed a little bit uh, outwards. Uh, so you can put the glass behind and then glue another uh, matchstick behind. So I'm just showing you I added some stairs to go into that little nook. Uh, everything's kind of glued on. All the walls are glued together. Everything looks pretty uh, nice and tight. And just putting it on to the, uh, onto the bottom level here. So I did do a lot of assembly with the bottom piece there. I know I finished that piece, and, and that's purely just for <laughs> the show purposes, like doing the, set, the episodes. Um, but frankly, if I wasn't doing a YouTube video for this, I probably would have just built the entire thing and then painted it all at once. Um, but... Uh, Actually, you know, it, it's not a bad thing to paint them modulized like this um, because I was able to do all those light effects and it's a little harder once I put that overhang to actually get in there and do all that. So I'm not dissatisfied and, and I might actually continue doing that in the future just do it in sections. All right, so now it's time to add all the uh, popsicle sticks to the flooring uh, here. Uh, so I just added a bunch of planks on here. I plan on covering all the floors on and then inside that nook. Uh, just to give it a nice hardwood floor look.
There we go. This is after I've completed that. I did put uh, balsa wood in the corners. You can see those balsa. It gives it a little extra support in the corners if you glue that in there. And I just used white glue. So now I'm going to hide the edges of the bottom. And it's a good place to add our supports that I'm going to put on those little timbers underneath. So I use balsa wood all the way around the, the base of this uh, second floor. Just make sure you don't glue it to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> all right so you just kind of uh i just kind of use some white glue there some tacky glue and glue that on uh, this is also going to help me uh secure the top floor to the bottom floor i don't use magnets i'm just going to use the same as uh, uh the block house uh, using those little timbers underneath to hold it in place so now i'm going to hide the corners I use popsicle sticks, and that's a match stick in the very corner. So you kind of put the popsicle sticks to the two corners, and you leave it. There's a little bit of a square there, so I, I usually fill that in with a match stick. And then that gets you a nice tight corner. So then I started adding the details in. Those are all coffee stir sticks. That's a good size for adding that on there. And I had some more details around this uh, little nook that's coming out. Uh, added that on there. Just showing you, I added a little kind of embellishment on the bottom. I just came out a little circular bottom. I was going to put some more decorative things on there, but I, I just I went with that instead. Uh, just to add something. And I could always add something in the future, I suppose. So I plan on doing more. So now, uh, above that nook, I want to do a little bit of a roof. So I, I can't do a triangle. I didn't want to do a triangle shape, but I want to do more of a round shape. So I cut kind of like the shape of lips. <laughs> That's what I would say. Uh, and then I kind of bent it over that uh, paint bottle there just to give it uh, that bent feel like that. Uh, and then I'm going to glue that on with white glue. And then I put shingles on. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about shingles in this episode because I am going to do it in the third episode. We we're going to do the entire roof. Um, but that is uh, insulation foam. Um, and I cut it out into thin strips. I uh, texturized it uh, with like a, a wire brush. Uh, and then cut them into shingle size and glued it all on there. That was my first time using foam, and I really liked it. So I'm going to probably look at using that in the future. So those are those timbers I told you about, uh, same as the blockhouse. And that really is when you put the top level onto the bottom, it keeps it secure. Uh, and then I added this brace bar. Now, uh, I, I it's really just to hold the roof straight uh, on the top, and it really that's where the roof is going to rest on. So it was kind of an important piece to put in there. Uh, so then that's where my sign is going to be, my little crest for uh, the blacksmith's house. I put that on there with a little square piece. Uh, and I just, just, I'm just showing you all the finished, uh, you know, the uh, Tudor style kind of framing on the outside of the house. That makes it, uh, give it that look. So I've completed it with all the coffee stir sticks. So I was just showing you, I finished gluing them on the bottom. See, I've got the smaller ones on the one side, and there's a bit of an overhang on the other side, so I was able to do those a little bit longer. Uh, I just glued them to the bottom, don't glue them, like, glued them to the, to the top piece, don't glue them to the bottom. <laughs> so now moving on to uh, the black craft paint, I put on my base coat, uh, and then I'm going to the real brown. So these are all similar colors. Again, not spending a whole lot of time on this because I've covered this in several videos. Um, just showing you that I did do this. Uh, and, and of course, I'm going to match the bottom uh, and the top together. So I did the same color scheme to the to the bottom. So it's going to be part of the same building. So I'm just showing you I plan on covering the entire thing. All right, so that's Bark Brown uh, and the Peblo. Uh, I'm going to put all that on there too as well. Just all around. Just going to dry brush it on there with that big brush. Uh, and add all those colors into there. Uh, which is going to really give me some uh, a nice base to this building. And all those uh, layers of craft paint really uh, seal this in and make it nice and sturdy. Uh, I mentioned I don't use Mod Podge. I just use uh, multiple layers of craft paint. Uh, and it works uh, just as good. It's just as fine. Um, so there, uh, just getting that uh, camel. Uh, I want to do it on the hardwood floors. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of, on the stone. Uh Actually, I didn't, uh, I, I'm sorry about that. I didn't put it on the hardwood floors. I just did it on the walls, the stone areas. Because uh, on the floor, I'm going to use the real brown and uh, a yellow ochre, as I uh, did in all my other uh, floors. So, But I did add a little bit of orange to this, uh, which I hadn't done in the others. It'll get a little bit of a different color, 
but uh, still that yellow ochre and uh, real brown are um, pretty strong. It'll, it'll cover a little bit. But I wanted a little bit of undertone of brightness under there. That's why I left that orange on there. So I'm showing you just a little bit of this technique. Um, you know, I'm doing this painting portion of the video, and I'm not really showing you how to do any of these techniques. But I have covered all these uh, different uh, uh, painting techniques in other previous videos. Um, and uh, if you're interested in watching how I uh, individually do that. Some of them are like the Tudor style building and the uh, the bark build. They're, I spent a lot more time showing you how to paint things and actually the technique I use, um, even on the, some of the fortifications. Uh, just it's, it's kind of repetitive, and I, but I, I just wanted to point it out um, so you guys can see what I, what I was doing to, uh, to paint this. I was really happy. Uh, now, to make those side walls, uh, I kind of did it out on the in the first video when I did the base. I put my brush flat and kind of just rubbed it uh, on the uh, on the those uh, street tiles. Uh, same thing I'm gonna do. Uh, I did on those walls. That's how I got that just uh, kind of a nice looking stone look on there. So unfortunately, I had to go back to the crusted sore. Uh, sadly to say. Only because I did it on the base and I wanted to match. So I had to go back and stick it back on and be disappointed with it again. Uh, because uh, it just it turned out purple when I put it on there. I, I think maybe it's the undertone of colors I use. It, that, uh, that color just didn't work out with it. Um, so I'm just showing you. I, I'm not overly careful when I'm putting the color in between these uh, planks. Because I plan on doing colors all over those planks. So you just you're just really filling in those squares. And I use that small little dry brush uh, by Army Painter. So this is after I've added the two reds on there, the dragon red and uh, uh, pure red. So I just uh, wanted to again match the uh, the base. So now we're going to address the uh, wood portion of it. Uh, I'm going to use uh, dark stone, uh, necromancer cloak. Um, ash gray. I got some uh, matte white and some matte black and then Morphang uh, brown. So these are pretty well the colors I use to make aged wood. Uh, I kind of start with the dark grays and work my way up to light grays and add some of that. Uh, actually before I add the light gray I put the Morphang brown on there uh, and I do plan on adding those colors to the shingles that's what I was pointing out. So there's my flat square brush that I use to paint all my ships. Uh, that's the brush I like to use uh, for these planks. I'm just showing you that's what I plan on pulling up from the bottom. So you can see I've added the grays on there, that morphing brown. I did the uh, balsa wood inside the, the uh, building as well. And now I'm planning on adding a little bit of army green, uh, commando green, uh, and the skeleton horde um, to the shingles here. So I'm just going to put that skeleton hoard on first uh, and then add some of the greens in there just to add a little bit of plant life. So then I moved to painting that crest. I just freehanded that on there. I didn't show that in this video. Um, I probably will at some time in the future maybe do a video on freehanding signs. Um, I just used a very fine brush and painted that on there. All right, so the second floor is finished, even though I'm showing you the base. <laughs> I just wanted to show you the forge again. Uh, and uh, we're moving on to the uh, second floor here. Uh, I'm really happy how that uh, turned out. It, it looks a good match for the bottom. Can't tell the difference. They look like they're a part of the same building, and that was the idea. <laughs> uh, even having to make the same paint mistake just to make it match, right? Um, so I was really happy with the weathering of the uh, boards on the inside. Um, looks like a good aged uh, stone walls and, and uh, that little nook. Um, I was really happy with uh, the way the interior looked. It looks very uh, realistic and that's what I was hoping for. Uh, I got the glass in the windows there. A little dirty uh, <laughs> from some of the paint. I didn't actually end up putting glass in that uh, little nook on the front. I, I kind of just wanted to keep it open for... Uh, you know, get people to shoot out just like I have right there, there in the image there. Uh, but I uh, just want you to get a good look of all the different elements we've added on to this, uh, to this uh, blacksmith's house. So those shingles, uh, it's the first time I've done that. I'm going to plan on doing that on the roof. 
Uh, and then I'll spend a lot more time on that in the third video, and hopefully that'll be the last one for this. <laughs> uh, and that'll complete that. So here's uh, that. Also, that little part is good for a handle. Uh, pull off the, the second floor from the base. And just showing you the main floor. Really happy how those stairs turned out. Uh, and uh, overall, really happy with the construction of this. So I had this crazy idea of trying to look out the window. So don't mind this part. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys like what we're doing here at the Planet Ed, make sure you smash that like button to consider subscribing to the Planet Ed to get first hand information when I start these kind of projects. Alright everyone, thanks so much for watching and I'll...